As you can see from my previous video that I just did on the soldier farming at Trader's Caravan, what I want to show you now is, as you look at my mother base and all my platforms, I am completely full. I can't put any more soldiers in any of those areas, unless, of course, they're higher rank. So what I want to show you is, when you're doing the farming for soldiers, like from my last video, don't worry about looking at their grades. Just fault and extract all of them, as many as you can. The reason is, is because all the ones of lower grade are going to go from the brig to your waiting room. So you can go ahead and dismiss them if you like, such as an A plus or an A. You can go ahead and dismiss them. What you, what I like to do is, and I'm going to go to staff management and to my waiting room. So, like, for instance, uh, Bastard Jackal, not a very good name for a man anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure he knows who his father is. Um, now, he is a gunsmith assault rifles. Now, there is the distinguished cross from him surviving the skulls right below his collar. These are the guys that you need to go up and level. But I'm not going to bother with him because he's only an A plus in R&D and I've already built all of my assault rifles. So I don't need a gunsmith really to work on and he's going to take me 10 to 12 times playing uh, C2W to even get him up that far to an S rank. So what I do is I just I'm going to dismiss him. I just got him in the previous mission that I was soldier farming. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss him. Now, Midnight Hippo. He is an A++ in R&D. As you can see, his level is already starting to rise because he has survived the skull attack. Now, if I take a lower ranked character out of my combat unit and place him in there and then select mission C2W and use him and play it five times, he will then get another medal and then two more times after playing with the medal, he will be an S rank soldier. So I'm going to keep him because that's what I'm going to do. Also, he just got out of the brig. And that's what I'm going to show you next. This is my brig. All of these characters that you see in this brig, 58 of them, were from me doing Trader's Caravan twice. And here's all of the S rank soldiers. And as you see, all these up arrows... That means they were already um, S-ranked as it goes, but now they're continuing to rise. Now, so he's already an S-rank in there, in combat. So now we're going to see R&D. The good thing is, too, you're not getting like one area of S-rank soldiers. When you're doing this, you're getting all the areas at simultaneously at the same time. So it's actually very, very helpful. And it keeps your levels of each of these, your, your R&D and your support group and your Intel medical and base, it keeps them all pretty close together. As you can see, I'm 93, 93, 91, 92, 92. So it keeps everything in pretty close proximity, which is also very helpful. Okay, now we're going to see what we got for base. Not bad. Support. That's That could use some work. Intel. Not bad. Could use a little work. And medical. Medical's really good. Okay, now we're going to look at a couple of the A plus for R&D. We're going to get past the S's. Okay, 
and S is for anyone else. Like, for instance, this one here. Dark Hippo is an A++ in R&D and an A++ in bass. So, and, but he is a gunsmith submachine gun. He is also a skull survivor, as you can see. Now, I will place him in R&D, and then I will back out of staff management. And then I will go back in, take him out of R&D, and put him in my combat unit. Then the only thing that's important is you have to remember who he is, Dark Hippo, because he'll be down the list quite a ways. Then I will take him and put him in and use him and do the mission C2W and play it five times. You, you basically want to fly right into the Eastern Communications post, take out the three radar dishes with your mini gun on the helicopter and you'll never land you have to do that five times after the fifth time place him back you can go in and see him when you switch out the snake and then put him in the waiting room and you can look at him and he'll be an s rank then you could take him and place him back in r d where you can keep doing this to all of the skull survivors like this gentleman here smoking marlin again he is a skull survivor he is definitely an s rank character here's another one there's another could be an s rank character now he's already an s so you, you don't really want to mess with him too much here he is a gunsmith another s rank character possibly another s rank character uh, I don't really mess with troublemakers uh, when they get out of the brig if, if he's not needed and he goes to my waiting room I generally dismiss them anti-ballistic missile engineer a diplomat that's great he has no job so he'll just be placed tough guy that's a really good one he has no job. There's a perfect example. Gunsmith grenade launchers. Put him in the waiting room. Put him in your combat unit. Put him to C2W. That A++ will be a S after the fifth and final time. Now I have a, um, a couple of soldiers I can show you that I've already done this to. Black Rooster is one of them. He was an A++. As you can see, he's now an S. Some of them were already S's. I didn't mess with them. Stalking Buffalo. I actually did him from an A+. Um, because he was one of my first uh, high-ranking um, soldiers when I first started playing the game. And um, I always play free roam um, bef after the first mission, Miller, and go ahead and take all of the radar vehicles out so I can land my helicopter everywhere. Um, it did take me about 15 to 18 times because a few of those times that I did see 2 w my helicopter was shot down. Um, that's a price you pay when you play it that early. Um, you will lose some GMP for getting your helicopter shot down. But in the end, it was worth to get that very first S uh, character that early in the game. And I believe I did that about mission right after uh, mission 4 C2W. As soon as I beat it, um, that way I could go and go ahead and, and, and select the mission after it was available so you can do that um, and since I'm posting this video I would like to share with you people a killer tip and secret about farming soldiers especially if you're going to start a brand new game 
You guys are familiar with combat deployment, I'm sure. But you have two versions of combat deployment. You have online and you have when your machine is on. This is all of your dispatch missions. Let's say that Snake is not exactly what you wanted him to be when you started. He became satanic, though. The piece of shrapnel in his head basically looks like a huge horn. And you're like, well, you know what? I want the real ending. I want the good stuff. And I want to do much better. I want to, you know, play more stealthy. Or you just want to play another game under your same name. And you want to play it stealth. This is what I recommend. And let's say you have great staff. So you can, your fighting ability is well over 5,500. You're like 8,500. But you're like, you want to go ahead and start another game. So you're going to go and you're going to delete your save file. Really, it's the only way to start another game unless you have another account. What you do before you delete your save file you take all of your make sure you have no dispatch missions going on because and you have all four FOBs that allow you to do as many of these as humanly possible so the first thing you want to do is you want to select all of these staff head hunting missions and you should be able to do all of them but one if you have four FOBs um, so medical is generally the last one of your areas that you can build so you might not want to do medical so this is what I recommend go ahead and do all the deployments for all of these you're going to get 10 S rank soldiers for each one of these missions. And then do the S plus. Now it's not a lot of them, it's only four of them, but do them too. And it's gonna take, as you can see, three days. R and D was a couple of days. The S ones were a couple of days. Now, and then take a break. Take a break. Wait one day, a day and a half, then start your new game. It's all you have to do, start your new game. Now, the great thing about this is that when this comes available, that it's still counting down your timer. And all of the men that you used to go and fight to get these soldiers, they don't exist. So you're not going to lose anybody. Then, when these end, you're going to get a rewards. And you will be able to get 14 very high-ranked soldiers very, very, very early in the game, in your new game. So you will possibly go from about level 9 to level 14 R&D and all of your other areas. You're going to go from being insignificant in level to possibly, by putting these guys in your R&D right away, you're going to get up into the level 30 to 40 very early in the game. And let me tell you something, in certain parts of this game, you need those sleep mines, I mean uh, sleeping grenades. You need C4. You need better hand grenades. You need a better silent non-lethal pistol. You need a silent sniper rifle. You'll need a silent non-lethal sniper rifle. And by being that high in level, you're going to unlock a lot more weapons and gear that you're going to need to really make you more successful in playing this game. So before you delete your save file, do this. Especially if your fighting ability is above 5,500. Do these and then wait a day, wait a day and a half, start your new game. By the time you're able to 
start building R&D and your base support, you'll be ready to accept these rewards and you'll be able to jump and level really, really, really quickly. Always, too, do these missions because when these come available, you're not going to have a lot of plants. You're not going to have a lot of minor metal. You're not going to have a lot of the things that you're going to need to beat it. Also, these are going to come available a little later when you start getting done with your FOBs. The gas masks are going to be one of the first that you'll want to do. Another one you want to do is body armor. Another one you're going to want to do is shields. Start doing these early in the game. Stop the trucks from deploying these materials and equipment that the soldiers in the field need. If you do, you'll make your life so much easier. You won't be seen because nobody's going to... You'll maybe get one of 50 guys that'll have night vision goggles on. Or you out of... 15 guys you'll see one guy with a shield so and then you won't see a lot of heavy infantry guys because there's not a lot of heavy armor so definitely work on those smaller aspects of the game it will make your life much much easier so I hope this video helps you and for those of you who are going to watch it early I hope the, the, the trick at the end really helps you and when you start your new game, really build up and start your, your uh, FOB rank and your other areas, your R&D and your base, your, I mean your R&D and your support units rather quickly. To go from level 1 to 8 or 9, which you're probably going to be, to level 30 to 40 is a huge jump. And it will really, really help you to be more successful in, in building up the materials, tools, and equipment that you're going to need to make this a much, much better game and honestly a lot more fun. And I highly recommend playing this game in a stealth mode. It has, it makes it a lot harder and the payoff is absolutely huge. So I, I highly recommend that you get the best endings. Um, go ahead and uh, I've actually played the game where I've only CQ seed everyone I never even put anybody to sleep so I mean that's extremely difficult I've done the whole game also except for one mission and no trace so I mean I played it in every aspect that it can be played so I'm not really a newbie at this so I hope this helps you out if you like it give me that little thumbs up and uh, if you like some of my videos and you think it's worth your time and effort go ahead and subscribe and you'll get that little alert when i come up with something new and fantastic this is big john playing a little metal gear solid y'all have a good one